Whenever I sit down to paint, I always choose a color palette. And most often than not, I will do a little swatch card like this. I find it frees up um, some of the admin stuff that you need to do in the creative process, like choosing colors. Uh, to me, is um, kind of like an admin task. So you've done the colors and now you're free to create whatever you want. In this video, I'm going to do two different paintings at the same time. And I call them, okay, let's call them cotton ball trees. Um, that's what they look like to me. <laughs> so this is a brush that I don't use all that often. It is a script brush. It has um, long-ish bristles, but very thin. It's quite flexible. And I find it's really good when I want to create soft movements or uh, in this case, I'm going to use them to create the branches of our tree and I'm just um, sort of painting in the main um, like the tree trunk I want to see in the main branches um, I didn't want to add too many branches because I will be painting uh, our cotton balls <laughs> with some light values so they would have shown through. I mean, I still have some that are showing through, but um, it's quite minimal, so it doesn't disturb too much. Now I'm gonna to switch to a number four round brush and I'm pointing at the color or the value of this paint's grade that I'm using. And this will be the first layer of it's call them foliage. Something's wrong with the cotton ball thing. <laughs> um, so I'm going to move from light to darkest. And what I do is I will lay down the colors and then I'm using a thirsty brush to sort of soften up the edges. When I say a, thir a thirsty brush is um, I will clean my brush and then with the rag that I'm holding on the left hand, I'm just pressing very gently uh, with uh, on the bristles of the brush and that kind of eliminates the outer edge of water. There's still a bit of water obviously inside the brush, but just by doing that, it makes the brush thirsty and it's able to suck up some of that uh, liquid that's on uh, around shape that you've just created I don't know if you heard this but my windows open I do apologize so I wanted to create something soft we're using a soft color to begin with so I wanted the edges to be a little bit softened up and that's why I used that method um, I want to say make sure you're using cotton paper if you're trying to do this on cellulose paper you might not get the soft edges that I was able to get. Um, for this, these two projects, I'm using a handmade paper. I know not everyone can get their hands on it, but any cotton paper will do. Now we're moving on to the sort of medium value of the color. I don't think I've explained uh, what I mean by the value of a color. It's basically how pigmented uh, you choose to use a color. Obviously to get the lighter value you would add more water to um, the color fresh out of the pan like when you pick it up with your brush you grab quite a bit of pigment if you especially if you started out by misting over your colors before you start painting which what I which is what I do I use a spray bottle of water and then I will mist or spray over the colors and let it sit for about two to three minutes and usually when I pick up the color with the brush it's quite pigmented 
So obviously the lighter value will need more water. And then as you move towards the darkest or uh, the professionals call it mass stone of a color, which is at its highest pigmented, um, then obviously you will need less water. The idea for me to use uh, light values and dark values is to give the impression that some of those balls are recessed um, or furthest away from us. And so by using light to dark, as darkest is always closest to us. And um, that's how I was able to achieve that look. I have mixed in as well shell pink. Uh, just to, I don't know, I didn't want to do an entirely monochromatic painting. And I like that a sort of peachy pink color. I think it plays well with um, with paint spray. Now, I have to say this paint spray that I'm using has a lot of blue in it. Depending on the brand that you're using, it might be different. Um, some paint spray do look more grayish than this. A good substitute for this color uh, would be Prussian blue. So if you don't have a paint spray that has that much blue, then you can always use brush and blue. Now we're moving towards another value, making our way to the darkest. This is um, the second to the darkest value that I'll be adding. Here's a fun fact I wanted to share with you. When I started on my watercolor journey, how long ago was that? I want to say four years ago, maybe. I probably started with one of the most difficult <laughs> technique, which is what I'm doing right now and softening the edges. I still haven't really figured out what the proper word is for that. Um, yeah. The reason why I'm telling you this is that I don't want you to get discouraged if you have a difficulty with this technique because it's not easy to do. And I also want to say make sure you've got a good soft bristle brush. Very, very important. And I would even encourage you to buy a cotton paper. You don't have to go very expensive. Uh, although it tends to be a little bit more expensive than the regular watercolor paper, but you can buy just uh, maybe a little pad. I know they sell, uh, I know, uh, is it Arches or Fabriano sells, um, I think four by six pads. So treat yourself to a small pad and try it out. You'll see the difference for sure. But definitely the brush has a lot to do with it. If you're trying to do this technique with, uh, brush that has a lot of spring back mm, might be a little bit more difficult, which is what I was trying to do when I started out. But we all start in the same place. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's once you get it, you get it. And it's very difficult to explain how it's done unless you're literally next to me and watch the brush in action with maybe like a side view, maybe one day. I will hook up my camera differently and show you what I'm talking about. Um, it has to do with the pressure of the brush and how much water you have on the brush. So it's to be practiced for sure, but count on me to start with the most difficult thing. <laughs> I want to say that and water control are the two most difficult things to master with watercolor. And I haven't mastered it yet. Uh, what is that color? <laughs> Could I be using gold? <laughs> I mean, it's a color that goes so well with everything, especially bluish tones. There's something so regal about blue and gold. I, I'm kind of laughing though, because this is not even supposed to be blue. It's Prussian. No, see, it's not even Prussian blue. It's true. It truly is Payne's gray. And you'll see that by the photos at the end, um, it'll give you a better idea of what the color really looks like. Uh, to me, right now, it just looks like Prussian blue. So it's misleading. My camera still has a hard time with the studio lighting that I'm using. Plus I was filming this during the day. Usually I film at night 
and although the blinds were drawn um, it still confused my camera uh, this is the latest the latest the darkest value that I'll be using and for at this stage I did not want to uh, work the edges too much I wanted the color to be very strong very well defined so um, yeah <laughs> there we go <laughs> good language <laughs> But it's doable. It is doable. I just chose not to do it. Also, when you have a dark color, you need more space to dilute the edges. Um, and that would only have made the shapes either too large or not intense enough in the middle. But yeah, I really needed those big contrasting blobs. Once all the balls had been installed, <laughs> it still feels funny to say this, I went over the main branch that I had already painted, making it darker, and also added some tiny branches throughout the tree. And I find this was the most difficult part to do, <laughs> strangely enough. I didn't want... I, I, I prefer to... Um, paint the branches as with the stems of the flowers that I do with very thin lines and it's very easy to go f fat <laughs> it can go fat very quickly and once you've gone fat you can't come back <laughs> I'm not using this metaphorically uh, when you when you paint li a line and you make it thicker you can't get it back to small it's very difficult <laughs> and um, so I had to be careful plus this brush although I do like using it it's a bit unstable just because the bristles are so long so depending on the pressure that you're applying on the bristles you can go thick very quickly um, but I think I did an okay job I mean there are still some spots that I see ghost a ghosting effect um, for instance, right underneath my fingers in that blob, I can see a branch running through it. It looks worse on camera than it actually is, I think. Thank you. 
I decided to add some dots on one of the paintings, not both, so I'm curious to know which one you like the best. Let me know in the comments whether you like the dotty one or the non-dotty one. <laughs> and I'm using a blue-black Uniball Signo DX pen in the size 0.38 millimeter. It's a great pen. The only drawback is that it's not permanent, but because I've done watercoloring, I didn't mind it. Now, if I were to give this as a gift, uh, for instance, Mother's Day would be a, a fun gift to give, either as a card or framed, I would still varnish, I would seal it with the uh, Kmar varnish by Krala. Kmar, Kamar, I don't know, K-A-M-A-R. Um, it really works well on this type of work. And we are done. So I thank you so much for watching. I want to say a huge thank you to my awesome patrons who support my art over at Patreon. And in return, they get exclusive videos for their generosity. And that's what allows me to create content here, free content here on YouTube. So uh, join me in my gratitude towards them. Please keep on creating, stay healthy and safe, and I will see you soon.